Hello viewers, today we will try to know more about a Greek novelist called Longus who was a novelist and a romancer. He wrote a novel which is a pastoral romance titled Daphnis and Chloe. This is a pastoral romance written by Longus. It is a story of a boy and girl named Daphnis and Chloe respectively. They were born to unidentified parents and discovered by a goat herd and a shepherd who takes care of these two as their own children. Daphnis and Chloe were found by the shepherds along with the some identifying tokens. Daphnis and Chloe grew up together living a pastoral life along with their foster parents. Here the emotions like affection and love surface and they try to take lot of space in this great novel written by Longus. During their stay at the foster parents, they assisted their parents and looked after their goats and cattle. In the course of time, they fell in love and tried to discover the reason for their passion for each other and the means to gratify it. In the attempt to do so, they were misguided by others and thus had bitter experiences in life. Their life became a miserable one, but the romance ends on a happy note with their union. Daphnis and Chloe is an interesting pastoral romance considered to be a masterpiece written by Longus. It is a story of a boy and a girl called Daphnis and Chloe who live a pastoral life along with their foster parents. The whole story is divided into four books. Book 1 deals with the discovery of the boy and the girl by a goat herd and the shepherd respectively. They brought up the children as their own. With the passage of time, they appear as a young boy and a girl who fell in love with each other. Book 1 ends with Daphne's torture by the group of men and Dorkin's efforts to save them. Now, coming to book 2, it begins with a group of men from Methine unexpectedly visiting the seashore and they get attracted by the beautiful beach. They later kidnap Chloe and her entire herd and cattle in the view to make up their loss. The group of men have been avenging their loss of ship and goods and torturing people for no fault of theirs. But finally, Chloe is rescued by Pan and she returns to her parents. In book 3, Longus writes about the passionate love between Daphnis and Chloe. They try to find out the reason for their passion and various means to gratify it. In the process, they are misjudged by others who deprive them from the glory of life. The last book, book 4, it describes their love for culminating in success. The book depicts their separation for the time being, identity of their real parents and their union after the marriage at the happy end. Thus, the novel ends on a positive note. Now, more about the pastoral romance and more about the novel. The pastoral romance Daphnis and Chloe is set in the Isle of Lesbos during the second century. Now look at the idea of this novelist who wrote or gave this idea or contributed to the world of literature as early as second century. The Isle of Lesbos is a beautiful place having an attractive beach blessed by the gifts of nature. It is considered to be an island of love where the action of this pastoral romance takes place. The story begins in spring when Daphnis and Chloe are sent to pasture together and ends in the autumn of the following year with their marriage. In the neighborhood of the isle, there is a city named Mytilene. The 
action actually takes place in the countryside that is outside the city. Such a setting makes this romance a real pastoral one. Daphnis and Chloe is a pastoral and rhetorical in style. The central characters Daphnis and Chloe are conventional shepherd and shepherdess. It has a theme of love which is very sublime as the major theme which runs throughout the story. Longus imparts human interest to the idealized world which makes this pastoral romance trace a resemblance to the modern novel. Daphnis is the central character and hero of the romance. He is a dark haired, strong and handsome young boy. He is discovered by Lemon, a goat herd who adopts him as his own child and takes the responsibility of his growth and proper nurturing. Myrtle, Daphne's foster mother, contributes equally to his growth and becomes a responsible mother. Daphne falls in love with Chloe and starts the pursuit of love and gratification. In the meantime, he is misguided by some groups and he suffers for the time being. Lycanion, the woman who educated him in lovemaking, creates anxiety in his mind about his attempts to love Chloe. It results in misery and long-term suffering for him. Later, he is kidnapped and looted. Thus, he loses his herd and cattle. At the end of the story, he is united with his beloved and also gets back to his real parents with the post-marriage glory of life. The second important character of this novel called Chloe. Chloe is the heroine of the romance and the beloved of the hero Daphnis. She is blonde and delicate, a beautiful young girl. She is also discovered in the forest by a kind family. Dryas and Nape are her foster parents who adopt her as their child in, and bring her up as responsible parents. Chloe falls in love with Daphnis and becomes very possessive and passionate about him. She has deep love for him and can't imagine love and life without him. She is also kidnapped and robbed by a group of men but anyhow escapes from their clutches. Finally, she marries her lover, Daphnis, and feels as if her life is full. Now, another character, Lemon, is a nobleman who discovers Daphnis and decides to become his foster father. He is dedicated and keeps his promise of being a responsible foster father. Another character is Myrtle. Myrtle is the wife of Lemon. She willingly accepts Daphnis and becomes a responsible foster mother. Third character, Dryas, Chloe's foster father, a kind-hearted man, always takes care of the adopted Chloe. Nape is another interesting character. She is Chloe's foster mother and a compassionate lady. Megacles, a rich nobleman and the real father of Chloe. Dorkin, the would-be suitor of Clo. He puts in all possible efforts to convince Dryas to agree to his marriage with Chloe. Nathan, the would-be suitor of Daphnis. But Daphnis does not like her since he is already in love with Chloe. Eros is again the god of love. Dionysophanes, Daphnis' real father, the king, and the master of the island. Philitas, old countryman who advises Daphnis about love. Lycanion, the woman who educated Daphnis in love making. So you can see there are many characters who play their vital role apart from the two major characters Daphnis and Chloe. The setting of book one is in the Lesbos island near the city of Mytilene. 
book one opens with the discovery of a boy and girl by a goat herd and shepherd respectively. Lemon, the goat herder finds a baby lying in the fields of lush estate of a rich man. The baby has an identifying token and a treasure. He thinks of leaving the baby and the treasure both, but then he makes up his mind on human grounds and takes away the baby to his home. He carries a dagger with an ivory hilt, purple cloth and the baby. His wife, Mirtail, feels as if they were blessed by God, hence because they were yearning for children. Hence, the couple decides to take care of the child as their own. Lamon and Mirtail can make out that baby belongs to some rich family which has deserted it for certain reasons. They decided to name the child as Daphnis and become responsible foster parents. Two years later, there is one more similar kind of incident. Dryas finds a girl child in the fields wrapped in expensive cloth having some gold coins as a token of identity. He is at first reluctant to take the child home, but later thinks that God wants him to take care of the child. So he takes it home. Dryas, wife, Nape becomes very happy at the sight of the child and agrees to take care of the child as her own and names it as Chloe. The next scene opens after 13 years. The foster parents of Daphnis and Chloe had the same dream in which they visualized that Daphnis and Chloe are properly grown up and are handed over to Cupid. Who is Cupid? Cupid is god of love by the wood nymphs. Both the parents awake and decide to take a chance and send Daphnis and Chloe to begin their destiny. Daphnis and Chloe live together most of the time and develop intense feelings for each other. One day Daphnis falls into a ditch. He is saved by Dorkin who falls in love with Chloe at first sight. On the other hand, Chloe also falls in love with Daphnis and is almost lost in the world of fantasy. She forgets everything and always keeps thinking about Daphnis. Dorkin tries to channel his proposal for marriage through her father. Dryas Dorkin offers many gifts to Dryas on different occasions with an expectation that he will win the hand of his daughter. Nothing happens as expected, hence Dorkin gets angry and thinks of taking revenge on Dryas and Chloe. Dorkin chalks out a plan to kiss and seduce Chloe. He decides to do so in disguise as a wolf at the time of her bath. Daphnis comes to know about this and sends his dogs to protect Chloe from any danger. In the attack of the dogs, Dorkin almost loses his life but finally manages to escape with great difficulty. Towards the end of uh, book one, some Tyrian pirates attack Daphnis and steal his herd and kidnap him. Dorkin interferes in the matter and manages an easy escape for Daphnis. Unfortunately, he becomes the victim of the pirates and loses his life. Very unfortunate incident. Chloe enjoys the moment with Daphnis but also mourns the death of Dorkin. Book 1 ends on a sad note with the death of Dorkin. Let's see what book two has in store for us. Book two begins with a description of the grape harvest upon the Lesbos. A group of men from Mithene unexpectedly visit the seashore and get attracted by the beautiful scenery and the beach. They decide to stay back there for some time and anchor their boat. In the meantime, Daphnis and his goats visit the spot 
and the goats eat the stuff kept in the boat and later allow the boat to drift away. The men think that deafness is responsible for their loss and they beat him for the mistake. The men want compensation for the loss incurred and decide to loot the town. They send more soldiers and kidnap Chloe and take away her entire herd and cattle. These men have been asking, taking revenge on the people for the loss of their boat and goods and keep torturing them for no fault of theirs. Daphnis notices Chloe's absence and starts a search operation. He also prays to the nymphs to protect her from all dangers. The nymphs call upon Pan to rescue Chloe from the evil men. While doing so, Pan notices that some men are bathing on the seashore and have anchored their ship. Pan calls upon dolphins for help and destroys their ship in the sea. Chloe is rescued by Pan and she returns to her parents. A lavish banquet is arranged for her safe return. The people of the town sacrifice many things to the nymph for the help. Three, it opens with a change in the season. You see a beautiful description of the season here. It is now winter and severe snowfall takes place on a regular basis. It is difficult for Daphnis and Chloe to meet and indulge in romance. Both the lovers feel like fish out of water and intensely want to meet each other. They pray to Nymph and Pan who also cannot change the course of the season. There is no way out for them to meet each other. Ultimately, Daphnis decides to go out for bird watching and stands outside Chloe's house. It is noticed by foster father Dryas who invites him to stay along with them for a few days. Thus, the lovebirds get an opportunity to stay together for some time. Again, there is a change in the season. This is second change. Now, it is a spring encouraging the love couple to find a final solution for their passion for each other. Daphnis does not know the art of lovemaking. He gets advice from Philetus, but it does not give him complete satisfaction. Then Daphnis approaches Lycaenion, a woman who educated him in the art of love making. Ultimately, Daphnis realizes the pleasures which are possible in the company of Chloe. After learning the art of love making, Daphnis comes back to the town and expresses his willingness to marry Chloe and requests her father for his permission. Dryas rejects the proposal on the grounds that he is not of noble blood and does not have any fortune at all. Daphnis, disappointed with the negative development, is visited by Nymph in his dream. Nymph reveals that Daphnis will find a gold treasure near the dead dolphin at the seashore. What a strange thing to predict the future of Daphnis by the Nymph. The next morning, Daphnis goes to the spot and finds gold coins which he offers to the Dryas and tries to convince him for the marriage. And Dryas agrees but wants to confirm the matter only when the king gives consent for their wedding. This also shows the love of Dryas, the kind of love he had for his daughter Chloe. The Dryas is a very, very doting father. Book 4, it describes the love affair which culminates in ultimate success and union. King Dinosophanes is scheduled to visit the town. It is expected that all the citizens should be neatly dressed and well prepared to welcome the king. Daphnis puts in all efforts to get ready for the marriage and to impress the king with his preparations. He prepares his garden fattens his goats, 
But unfortunately, one of the close suitors named Lampus destroys the garden so as to spoil Daphne's efforts to marry Chloe. The king's son comes to know about it and decides to rescue Daphne. He tells the king about it and his horses and says that his horses have destroyed the garden which was neatly developed by Daphne. The king visits the town. He is impressed because everything is found to be in order and intact. He does not give any consent to the marriage proposal. Lemon and Myrtel are disappointed with these developments. Lemon and Myrtel personally visit the king and tell him that Daphne is of royal blood. He had a dagger as a token of identity and they reveal the facts of their adopted son right from the beginning since he was found in the fields. Well, this becomes the turning point in the life of Daphne. The king immediately realizes that Daphne is his own blood and remembers that he had left the child with the sheep in the fields immediately after his birth. Then it was picked up by Lemon. Now, the whole sequence of events is very clear to the king and he declares Daphne as his own son. This also proves that Daphne is of noble family. In the meantime, Chloe's identity is also revealed. She also belongs to a noble family. Megacles, a rich man, claims that he also left his daughter with his goats in the fields. Later, it was found and adopted by Dryas and Nape. Finally, Daphne and Chloe have found their real parents and the consent to their wedding is a spontaneous act. Immediately, all the arrangements are made for the marriage and they wed in the paradise. Daphne now has no anxiety in his mind about lovemaking. And on the glorious day, he has the courage to entreat Chloe to offer herself to him so that he can show her his art of lovemaking. The story ends with their union after the marriage. Now let's look at some important themes which really added a lot of interest and charm to this novel. Well, as you know, this novel is a pastoral romance and it is usually described as pastoral because the only example within the genre of Greek romances. Nature is at the center of the story. It is neither just background nor pure embellishment, but the basis of the action itself. The text connects the dynamics of its protagonist's relationship to the seasonal transformations of the surrounding landscape. It also shows how seasons have effect on human behavior and thought process. And of course, the relationships. The story begins in spring when Daphne and Chloe are sent to the pasture together and ends in the autumn of the following year with their marriage. Nature is believed to parallel or to stimulate the feelings of Daphne and Chloe. Another description of nature is shown in winter. Heavy snowfalls paralyze life in the town. Some peasants feel happy to rest at home, whereas the situation is unbearable for the young lovers. In another description of nature, the text also has two gardens, the garden of old Philetus and the large park belonging to Dionysophanes. It is presented along with the open space of pastures and meadows which serve as a natural setting for the love of Daphne and Chloe. Well, sublime theme of love also finds a lot of space in this novel. Love sickness is the effect of love in this pastoral romance. Daphne and Chloe both experience lovesickness, which at first they think to be some kind of illness. Due to some anxiety and fear, they lose their appetites, think of each other all the time and want to see each other again and again. 
love and suffering separate them and they start having secrets from each other. As a result, they cannot discuss their feelings. Here, it is found that love sickness is the first sign of love and leads to the lovers recognizing their difference. Nature also plays its vital role. In this Greek romance, Chloe is the first to experience love and her inability to identify her feelings which is linked to her natural upbringing. She does not know the name of the pain that is torturing her. However, strong their attachment to the landscape and the animal world, Daphnis and Chloe cannot understand their feelings or consummate their passion without the help of other people. That is, without being educated in love making. Although they grew up with animals, they cannot imitate their sexual acts. Human nature is revealed in this need for education. Now, getting educated in various aspects also becomes an important theme in this novel. The feeling of love of the couple is linked to the education and can be understood only in relation to this process. Certain aspects of their emotions come to the protagonists naturally, but some have to be taught and learned. The need for instruction and the ability to learn, however, are presented as inherent parts of children's nature. Here, we can make out the difference between experience and education. The experience of love precedes any knowledge of it and their education transforms their childhood attachment into erotic love. In response to the couple's need, the text provides Daphnis and Chloe with two instructions in love. The first is the old shepherd Philetus, who is skilled pipe player who educates Daphnis and Chloe on love. Both Daphnis and Chloe can benefit from the poetic lesson taught by Philetus. Only Daphnis, however, will proceed to the next stage of education. The second instructor in love is a woman named Lycanion. She gets attracted towards Daphnis for his personality and beauty. She volunteers to teach him how to make love. Well, very interesting facts are captured in this novel. And at the same time, it is lot of facts which also educate the young readers. To sum up, Longus, Daphnis and Chloe explicitly states its ideology of gender roles and sexuality. Chloe is the first to experience the emotion and reflect on its significance. Thus, in the beginning of the romance, she is presented as more sensitive and more mature than Daphnis. Her sexuality, however, needs to be controlled and it is Daphnis who is given the knowledge that will make him her instructor on the wedding night. Well, this shows how this novel has beautifully captured and educated the young lovers who ultimately get married and lead a happy life. I hope you enjoyed the different facts about the education of love presented by Longus in his beautiful novel titled Daphnis and Chloe. Thank you so much for listening to this session and we will meet you again in the next session.